Welcome, this is British National Party Television coming to you from Manchester. Now we're here today to report on the campaign to get Eddie O'Sullivan elected as a parliamentary candidate for Sale and Withinshaw. Now I've managed to get Mr Mike Whitby from Liverpool to speak to us. Now Mr Whitby, why have you given up your Saturday to come and campaign for the British National Party? Well, as you know, Tony, there's a, there's a parliamentary uh, by-election going on here. It's, it's a very heavily uh, dominated Labour area, but the, the, the reaction that we've had from the vast majority of people, particularly in the Withenshaw end, has been tremendous. You know, not so much in sale, because this is in, just in Cheshire. And down here, quite frankly, you know, it's, it's not, as, uh, not as good as, uh, as Withenshaw because my country is very important to me. It's the most important thing in my life. I work hard for my country. I've always worked. And it depends, if it depends on me to be out in the rain, to get this country back to where it belongs and to put Nick Griffin where he belongs, leading this country and making it prosper, not the way it's going at the moment, because I have grandchildren, I have seven, ranging from the age of 30 to the age of 10. And some of them can't even get jobs and they're being told that they're too lazy to work. But all the government are doing at the moment are paying people to be lazy. I'm standing on the, the concrete of, of sale, talking to people here in the wind and the rain and whatever, because I believe in this party and Eddie O'Sullivan is a good guy, he's a good candidate. I want to see him get as big a vote as he possibly can. And what sort of response have you received from the electorate here today? It's, um, you'd expect, you know, one or two people to have a little bit of a dig at you and whatever, but it doesn't seem that, that that happens so much anymore. You get the odd freak of nature who comes around and uh, thinks that their colossal IQ of 91 entitles them to challenge uh, what views that we have and come out with a normal Pavlovian R word, but most people now with the BNP understand and actually quite respect what we stand for. It's a really strange thing actually because whilst that doesn't necessarily translate into votes, certainly the opposition that was out there and whatever of the past 10, 15 years ago isn't there. I think what people recognise is that we may not be as commercially uh, viable or fashionable as the mainstream parties, but there is a degree of truth in, in what we say, and it's, it's just a matter of time before that impacts into the electorate. Now, since you're talking to people here today, yeah. what issues do you think are uppermost in their minds? Immigration. Immigration all the time. People saying the number of foreigners here, and we haven't got jobs, and this, that, and the other. And it's strange because they'd never, they'd never see you'd never see that with ordinary people they wouldn't be able to to talk about that kind of thing normally but because they see us as the BNP out on the streets they feel almost like they, they confide with us if you see what yeah, I mean yeah, we're like actually, almost do, like yeah. you know they, oh, yeah. did you know this they, they feel yeah. they can talk to us yeah. but everybody else they, they might get into trouble if they say something that they shouldn't so it's quite interesting a number of our activists have, have commented on that actually how mm. people open up to the British National Party where you don't seem to open up to other people, which mm. is really heartwarming, really, in many ways. Well, it shows one thing, it shows trust, doesn't it? That's what it shows. It shows trust. They can trust us when it comes to, to race and immigration and other things, whereas other parties, they don't really see that they're uh, in any way relevant when it comes to that. So it's all a matter of deceit, um, which, is, which is good, and that will pay dividends in the long run, one way or another, when the public do wake up uh, <clears throat> to the fact that they have actually got to do something rather than just take a passive view. I left my house at 6.30 this morning. We arrived here at about 11. I just want to stand up for my country and my people and do what I can. And I'm here to help Eddie out and hopefully we'll return a good result. Well, basically, I'm, I'm worried about the future of my grandchildren because this country is definitely going to the dogs and young people in particular are being sold down the river and I want that to turn around. I want my grandchildren to have a good future and that is my main reason for being here today. There's a lot of other reasons, but that is my main reason for being here today. And what sort of response have you received from the viewers here today? I'd say, generally speaking, it's a it's been a pretty good response. There's a lot of people really fed up with, you know, the way things are going, you know, the way British people are being pushed into the background. And I've had a lot of that kind of feedback today. Because we've got to put a stop to what's happening to this country. 
if we if we can't convince the people quicker and sooner, we're going to make our job even harder. Everybody knows what they've got to do. They've got to get rid of these elite politicians. So I've come up here to support Eddie O'Sullivan because he's a great candidate for this area, and I think he's getting a lot of support. Well, it's something I believe in. You know what I mean? Like I said, I've been here since day one, uh, and we've had gradually through the election. It's been growing and growing and growing. We come here, we had like six or seven people, eight people the next day, ten people, and it's been growing. It's just something I believe. I think Eddie's a good candidate. You know what I mean? He's a local lad, served in the army for his for, the, for his country, and he just. It's something you believe in, because Eddie's an, an, inspir, an, an inspirational person, I would say. It, it grows on you. Well, I've been a member of the BNP for 23 and a half years now, which I'm very proud of, and I've seen the BNP in that period of time grow and mature and become a stronger, more dynamic, more intelligent, more successful organisation. And I know that the BNP is, bar none, the organisation that will one day... Um, step forward and help to save this country. The British people will eventually see the light, they will wake up from their slumber and they will say the BNP were right all along, it's the BNP for me and I know that's coming, I can feel the temperature rising, I can feel the success of the BNP growing and that's why I invest my time and my money, my efforts in the BNP and that's why I've come here today because I know it's working for us. So far it's been absolutely fantastic, fabulous and mind-blowing. There aren't enough words to express how brilliant it's been. The party have been absolutely fantastic when they put the election machine into motion to do this. I've never seen anything like it. We, we really have gone up to another level of functioning here and it's absolutely fabulous. The response that we're getting back from people is unbelievable. Our leafleting campaigns are working, people are reading our literature and they're coming up to us and they're asking questions that they don't understand. And that's given us the chance to get our voice heard. That's given us our chance to tell the truth about what the British National Party are and what we stand for. And we stand for the people of Withenshaw and Sale East. And they get, they're getting that message now. It's fabulous. And what? I know, I know, I know that you personally put in an awful lot of work, which we're all grateful oh, yeah, for. Oh yeah. Uh, and I know you've talked to an awful lot of people. What are the issues that are uppermost in people's minds here in Manchester? The big one, and it's clear, and it's head and shoulders above every other issue that they've got, is Brit when we say British jobs for British workers, that message is getting through. They know that we're going to close the door on immigration. And what they're saying is, well, if an immigrant can come here and get a British job, that doesn't say much to the British workers. And that's exactly it, because our people aren't getting the resources allocated to them. They're not getting the training. These apprenticeships, they'll last six weeks. And at the end of six weeks, they'll say, the government will say, there you are, you've got a plumber now. You haven't got a plumber. A plumber needs four years. And that's what we're saying. We'll bring back indentured, proper apprenticeships for the young people who are out of work. And they will be four years long, they'll be five years long. And when, when you call for a plumber and he knocks on your door, he'll be about 21, 22 years old, and you can guarantee that that fellow knows what he's doing. Now, I managed to catch up with the chairman of the British National Party, Mr Nick Griffin, MEP. Now, Mr Griffin, could you tell our viewers how you think the campaign's going here? Yeah, Tony, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, I'd say it's the best campaign we've ever done. For the first time ever, we've cracked uh, the problem of getting leaflets delivered individually addressed to voters at exactly the right time during the campaign. Uh, none of the other parties have done it. We've got this capacity now in-house, we've got the equipment, we've developed the ability. I'm really, really pleased with that. It's a huge step forward. But on top of that, and the sheer number you've seen yourself, the sheer number of activists that we've got out here, uh, today alone we've got a team here in Withenshaw, we've got a team over in the posh pit in Sale, we've got nine leafleting teams out hitting the, uh, the estates and the streets as well. We're swamping the other parties in this campaign and it's really good to see. And I've seen you talking to the voters here today. What do you th which issues do you think are the uppermost of their minds? Uh, here in working class with and sure, two issues over and over again, and of course they're connected. It's jobs, British jobs for British workers, and it's immigration. Uh, the areas being pretty much white and Irish, very, very British, uh, and there's asylum seekers, all sorts of immigrants now starting to come in thanks to the Tory government and the Labour Party, and people are really angry about seeing their community going further and further to the back of the queue, and they want it put right. Well, thank you very much thank for you. talking to us, Mr Chairman.